What is going on guys? Welcome to this Python tutorial series for data science. In today's video, we're starting out with the pandas data frame, the biggest and the most important data structure of the pandas module and the big brother of the series that we talked about the last time. And a data frame is a little bit more sophisticated than a series because it's a little bit more like an SQL table or an Excel sheet. So you have multiple columns, multiple rows, and you can do a lot of different operations and it's a very useful data structure. So let us get into the code. So we're going to start by importing pandas as pd and matplotlib.pyplot as plt. So these are the two libraries that we're going to need today. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a data frame. And to create a data frame, what we're going to do is we're going to create, first of all, a dictionary with all the rows and the individual values, or actually the columns and the individual values of each row. And then we're going to take that dictionary and convert it into a pandas data frame. Of course, this is not the only way to create a data frame. Another way would be to load the data from an API or to read it from a CSV file. And we're going to use all of these methods in the future, but for now, we're just going to create a basic dictionary. So we're going to say data equals, and we're going to create a dictionary with um, all the keys being the column names and the values or the value being the list of the individual row values. So we're going to say name, for example, this is the column name. And we're going to say the value of name is a list of all the names. So we're going to say Anna, Bob, John, Mike. And then we're going to say second key or second column is H. So H could be Anna is 29, Bob is 43, John is 82, and Mike is 23. And then we could say height equals, or height is, and I'm again going to use the metric system. Let's say Anna is 176, Bob is 165, John is 187, and Mike is 182. And then we could have, last but not least, a gender column with M being male, and F being female, KC cleaner, I don't want to clean my computer right now. Uh, so F is female and M is male. And this is the column here. So we have this uh, dictionary right now that we want to convert into a data frame. And to do that, the only thing that we need to do is we're going to say PD, or actually DF equals PD dot data frame. And then we're going to pass the data or the dictionary. Then we could go ahead and just print the data frame that we just created and see what happens. So as you can see, we have an Excel-like or an SQL table-like structure where we have the columns in the top and then we have all the individual values. And we also have an index, an automatic index that counts from zero up until uh, the max number or the max amount of elements in that data frame. So we have the name, age, height, and gender. Uh, and then, of course, we have the individual values. So this is how a data frame is basically structured. And if we don't want to have an automatic index, we can also define an index. So uh, an index should always be unique because an index is a unique identifier of a row. So I could say, give me Anna, and then I get Anna, but of course, if I have a second Anna, it's no longer a unique index. So what I want is a number or some value that only one person can have. Uh, and this would be, for example, a social security number. So what I could do is I could just say uh, SSN for social security number, and then make up some social security numbers. Of course, no person has the same social security number. So let's say Anna has one, two, three, Bob has four, four, five, John has 511 and Mike has 872. So these are the social security numbers. And what I can now do is I can say df.setIndex and then set the column SSN as an index column. And of course, uh, if I want to adapt this or if I want to have this in my uh, actual data frame, I can either say df equals that because it returns a new data frame. Or as we learned in the last video, I can just specify in place equals true so that the change gets applied to the actual data frame. 
And as you can see, this is how you basically create a data frame with an index. As you can see, SSN is now the index column. So it's no longer an ordinary column. It's the first column, the index column, which everything is uh, yeah, basically indexed by. So now let's talk about some basic attributes and functions of the data frame. For example, what we could do is we could just print a part of the data frame. So for example, df.hat for the first uh, few rows. So if the default is five, but you can also specify 10 or three or two. So if I say df.hat2, what it does is it gives me the first two rows and yeah, basically the first two rows. And of course I can also use the tail function for the last two rows. We talked about this already when we talked about uh, the series. So it's the same function here as in the series. Now, another thing that we can do is we can use these basic uh, NumPy attributes that we already know. For example, ndim would give me the amount of uh, dimensions that my data frame has. In this case, of course, two, because we have columns and rows, so two dimensions. Um, or I could also say, give me the shape of the data frame. And in this case, it would return uh, four by four because the index column is not uh, calculated in that. So we have basically four columns, name, age, height, gender, and uh, four rows uh, four rows of the data frame. So we have four by four. Of course, if I add a new column here, uh, random, and I say one, two, three, four here, it would give me four by five, as you can see. And of course, if I add, uh, one more value in each column, of course, it would be five by four or five by five in this case. So this is the basic shape uh, attribute that we already know from NumPy. Another one would be the size attribute, which is just uh, the amount of elements that we have in the data frame. And this does not mean the amount of rows, but really the amount of elements that we have. For example, this is one element, uh, or actually this is not an element because we don't, uh, take the index into account again, but this is one element, this is one element, this is one element, this is one element. Every single value in the data frame is an, an individual element. So in this case, we have 16, of course, because we have four by four. So another thing that we can do is, of course, the D types attribute, but in this case, uh, it doesn't only give me the data type of the data frame itself, but it gives me the data type of each individual column. So name is object because it's a string, um, age is integer, 64 uh, bit, height as well, and gender is again an object, and the whole data frame has the data type of object. So this is the basic uh, data types attribute. Another interesting attribute that we haven't talked about yet is the T attribute. So just capital T, which gives me a, or gives us a transposed version of the data frame. And transposed just means that we swap uh, basically the columns and the rows. So what we now have is we have the rows SSN, name, age, height, gender, and the columns are now the individual person. So we have the person one, two, three, or the person with the security, social security number one, two, three, and this person has the name Anna, age 29, and so on. So we just swapped the columns and the rows. So this is the transposed version of the data frame. If you need that for some reason, sometimes we're going to need that actually. Um, and another thing that we can do, of course, is this is actually not an attribute, but I'm not now going to show you how to access individual values of the data frame. Um, if you want to have a certain column, what you do is you just pick or you just refer to uh, the column in form of or in the same way that you would do it in a dictionary. So you just say DF and then you say I want a name column. And this is then what you get, of course. But maybe you don't want all the names, but you want only the names, uh, only the second name, so index one. And then you would get Bob, of course, or you wouldn't get Bob, of course. Why wouldn't you get Bob, of course? I think we need to use the dot iLock attribute because this is how you do that in data frames, yes. So um, this is the next function that I wanted, or actually not a function, it's actually an iterator that I wanna talk about, the iLock iterator. So whenever you wanna get the location based on an integer value, you, you use the iLock iterator. So you have the data frame name, which is uh, the column name. And then you just choose the i location, the integer location one, which is the index one and the second position. And in this case, it is Bob. 
But of course, this does not only work with uh, individual columns. We can just say df.iloc1, and then we would get the whole Bob, uh, yeah, the whole Bob row. So we would get the name, the age, the height, the gender, the data type, uh, the index value, everything. And of course, uh, we get a detailed version of this row. But as soon as we pick uh, multiple rows, for example, zero up until two, uh, we no longer get this detailed version. As you can see, we then just get the individual rows. So this is how you basically um, access the individual values of the data frame. So last but not least, I want to show you how to plot the values of the data frame in an effective uh, manner. And it's done in the same way that we uh, did it in the last video with the series. You just pick the data frame and then you say dot plot, for example. And it's as easy as that, but in this case, it's even better because we have multiple columns in a data frame. And of course, what we can do is we can just say, okay, df uh, and then give me the age column and then just plot the ages. and show me that plot. So this would be, of course, the same thing that we, uh, that we did in the last video with the series. But Pandas is even more intelligent than that. It can just plot all the numerical columns in a data frame. So I can just say df.plot, or actually let's say df.hist for histogram in this case. And what it does is it filters out all the columns that we can visualize. So it ignores the name and the gender, for example, and it then just prints all or plots all these values. So it plots all the different uh, values that we have. So if we would have a data frame with like, uh, let's say financial data, and we have 20 columns and 16 of these columns are numerical, we can just say uh, df.hist or df.plot or df.plot.bar, and we would get all these values visualized with just one line of code. Uh, so we could also go ahead and say df.plot.bar, for example, and you would get a bar chart with the height and the age. Now, in this case, of course, uh, it's a little bit stupid because we now have the social security numbers down here and uh, heights and ages mixed, which doesn't make a lot of sense. So if you want to have it more sophisticated, of course, you have to do it yourself, but basically, uh, it's very useful when you have some machine learning models, for example, and you, want to, you want to visualize multiple things at once. You can just have uh, a 4x4 four four subplot grid and 16 subplots in there that show you the histograms of the individual uh, data columns of a data frame. So it's very useful to know that. And as I said, of course, you can just go ahead and say df.name, which is another way to refer to the column. So instead of just saying df and key, you can just say df dot key, so dot h, for example, df dot h, and then I can just say dot hist. And I would get a histogram of the h column. So that's how you easily plot and visualize your values in pandas. So these are the basics of pandas data frames. In the next video, we're getting deeper into pandas and statistics with data frames. So we're going to take a look at the statistical functions, what they do and how to use them. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video, if you enjoyed it, if you learned something and you want to support that channel, hit the like button for me. Of course, feel free to ask questions and give feedback in the comment section down below. And if you want to see more, subscribe to this channel for more future videos. So thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye. Thank you.